Good morning, Park. Seen some faces I ain't seen in a while. Uh -huh. Good to see everyone. It's a warm day out today, but the sun is shining and we'll take it. Amen. I'd like to start this morning with some prayer. And then uh, for those that desire to do so, uh, we're going to start back up with our testimonies again. Uh, I really, really enjoyed that, hearing uh, what's going on with people. And I got one. You got one? All right. Well, let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you uh, once again that we can uh, meet in your house. And Lord, we ask blessings over this meeting today. And we want you to be glorified. And we want you to be honored. And we're going to sing praise to you. And Lord, uh, we know that we're not the only church in this town or even in this world, Lord. So we're asking that your blessings be on the, the other uh, fellowships and households of faith that are meeting together, Lord. I truly believe, Lord, that your angels listen to us on a Sunday morning. Amen. And I think that they marvel because we do it of our free will, Lord. We desire to serve you. We desire to honor you. We desire to praise you. And we, we just hope that our praise is worthy of that glory. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I'm going to put Dave through the ringer today. He's going to try to record all the testimonies and so Bill said he had one. I'm gonna hand it to him first. But the other day I was in the yard working on the four wheeler and my wife came in there and was giving me uh, grief about things I ain't done around the house, you know. Like weeding the pavilion and this and that. So I told her I was about waiting on the park for the weed eater head to get here before I weed. So then she comes out a few minutes later and gives it to me. So <laughs> them things are a pain anyways and they it's got this little hex head on it that you got to hold with a flat head screwdriver. And then you got to kind of turn the head off. Well, I fall over for about 15, 20 minutes and I couldn't get it to go nowhere. So I was actually heading into my whole bar to get a hammer because I was going to fix it real good. And I thought, no, I'll go over to the smoker because I had some meat on the grill. So I reloaded the wood, went in the house. So I thought, well, YouTube it. You can find everything on YouTube oh, yeah. now. So it said there was a locking pin on it. So I thought, well, I'll go out and see. So I went out, looked for the locking pin, I couldn't find no hole because it's electric, it's, you know, the new age stuff. So I thought, man, I don't want to pull Rick with a screwdriver here because I was about ready to just tear this thing pieces. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to go back over to the wood, to the wood stove again. I checked my meat, flipped my chicken, and I went back over and I started looking at it. And I looked down and, and the threads were about that far below the nut. I thought, man, are you kidding me? I thought, that ain't even right because the threads were sticking out past the nut. I thought... So I took a screwdriver stuck in there, and it spun right off. I thought, now, I don't know how it happened, but I'm telling you right now, when I left it, it was going to get the hammer to beat it up. The threads were sticking outside the nut, and I couldn't get it to budge. Uh, but I just kind of, I, I almost, I mean, I was heading to the pole barn for the hammer because I was going to fix it, buddy. And I thought, no, I'm going to go to the wood burn, check my meat, check my chicken, and I went back, and I, I, did, I don't know how it happened, but I Lord saved me on that one because I, I just spun it off with a hand. I spent 30 minutes before that trying to get it off with a screwdriver and a pair of pliers. And I couldn't get it to budge. But hey, the Lord's good. He spun that thing off for me. I didn't have to worry about it. Amen. I still don't know how I got there, but it, it came off. Thank God for His mercy. He is patient towards us. I have two, two phrases for us. About a month ago, I was I got rid of the truck down here on 35. And my airbags didn't come out. My car was totaled and it had a messed up bumper on the back. But uh, no one was hurt. Uh, I praise God. I know he was there because uh, I should have been hurt at least, you know. So then this week, this week, yes. This week, I come out of my kitchen with my uh, electric wheelchair and uh, I. I hit the corner of our, my freezer that's against the wall right beside the door. And the bottom, my kitty had uh, four by fours and it was sitting on four, two four by fours. And the right hand four by four screwed it out. And so the freezer should have come down on me as I was going out. Yeah. And it came forward and landed on that rip, uh, ramp that I had. And I, I never got touched, so I know God's hands are 
attention. Not, the Lord. It, it, not saying it, said it shouldn't have went that way. So around, I guess it was. I praise Him for being with me and watching over me and protecting me and my family. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Mine's kind of a priest board, but it's also kind of um, a request for your guys' prayers. Because the line of work that I'm in, and I'm in line of work, same as Becky, um, there's a lot of things I come across in my job with young girls that are recovering drug addicts, um, alcoholics, people that are homeless, all that. And I know God puts us in certain places at certain times and for certain reasons. And I don't think I've ever shared this with my mom and dad, but the last two months I've been involved with a younger girl at my apartments that um, is a recovering drug addict, and she has a four-year-old, but she's pregnant, and she don't want the baby. And I know several people that want kids that can't have kids. And she actually asked me if me and Bill would adopt the baby. And, of course, we don't want to start all over, obviously. But um, if, if I had time, I definitely would. She's a beautiful girl. Her little girl's beautiful. But she confides in me. And her mom's not in her life since she was four years old. She's around 23 years old. And um, she confided in me. And I actually found a couple that I went to school with that can't have kids. They already have the legal papers all set and everything. I'm actually involved with a girl in a pregnancy. I have been since the last four months, and she's 32 weeks right now. Um, and I found a, a home for the baby, and I've got them in contact, and I'm kind of like the middleman. So just pray that, I mean, like, it has to be hard on her to give up a baby anyways, but she knows it's best, and she knows that she can't deal with having another kid with her situation. She doesn't want the baby, but I'm so glad she didn't do something else. Yeah. So um, just pray. That all really works the way it should. Um, yeah. It's tough. Yeah. Amen. And that put me in that position to help this girl and actually to help a family because it's, it's really weird. It's not your coincidence. It's the couple I, I got in touch with that actually messaged me and asked me, they adopted a baby about two years ago. And believe it or not, the same scenario, her mom worked for apartments and there was a girl that came to her and asked her if she knew anybody and her daughter adopted that baby. And so it was the same situation. So it's almost like it was meant to be. So just pray that um, God gives her strength and that this couple and everything, that everything will go smoothly. And um, I know it's going to be heartbreaking if something falls through, but they've been through the process before. And just pray for the whole situation because, I, I mean, I feel blessed and honored that I'm able to be in a situation where I can help somebody that can't have kids, but also be there for this girl that is very troubled and needs somebody in a time of need. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 All right. I'll just praise the Lord today because I want to. I haven't got a lot right now to be praising for, but I'm watching him work. So uh, I have lost an eye to the left, and uh, they're sending me down to Indianapolis to save the other one. Hopefully, that was the word that was used. But I have my Lord, and I know what he can do. I was anointed yesterday. And I will tell you that I felt this morning that it was a little better, the one on the right. Good. And right. Uh, it didn't seem to have that fuzziness that it's had. So I'll just praise the Lord for that and expect more. Expect more. And, uh, because God wants us to be faithful in every area. Amen. And if you're going to pray for healing, then you've got to stay faithful with that. Right. Amen. And uh, so I'm planning on being able to see as good as anybody else in a real hurry. And uh, but uh, it's been traumatic for me because I uh, so pray for me. Uh, my balance is so far off that these these guys had to get me in here today. <laughs> so, but uh, <laughs> but uh, you know because I just seem to bounce around. So uh, but keep me in your prayers. I did follow God. Foot that's black and blue, and uh, so this has been a trial for me. So keep me in your prayers. Yes, yeah. amen. Well, I'm thankful. I had three sis taking lumps, sis taken off of me, and they were benign for cancer. Very long. No cancer. Anybody else? All right. Good to hear those testimonies. Yeah. We need to hear some good news, don't we? Amen. All right. Uh, I don't know where our song leader went to. I
I guess I'm going to be it. Oh, say. you're going to be it. Oh. All right. At least that's what I was told. <laughs> and you always do what you're told, right? That's right. Most of the time. It must be true because he didn't look at his wife to see if she was looking. So. All right, I'm going to have... How many years did it take to get that way? 48. <laughs>
Amen. How many of you's got the victory today? Amen. Praise the Lord. I feel like traveling on. Page 655. 655. 655. 655. Thank you, Ann, for marking this for me.
dance around the camera here. Yeah. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before you and we bring the offering plate, Lord, we know that uh, your word is true and that you own the cattle yes, on a thousand hills. Yes, amen. And Lord, this is just us uh, being obedient and faithful back to you, Lord. We're, we're thankful, Lord. And Lord, we ask that our hearts would be right with our giving, that we would not be begrudging in our giving. That's right, Lord. For there's no blessing in that. So Lord, we're just asking that you would take these monies and that it would be go according to your kingdom and your purposes, Lord. Mm -hmm. That uh, ultimately more souls will come to you through it. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do we have anybody that wants uh, that was going to sing some specials today? I see Dave's got his iPad up here. I just put anybody it else? Here. You have one. Well, don't do that begrudgingly. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So, uh, I have Melinda's coming up. <laughs> I got it on there. Hopefully, I can make it through this song. This song always gets to me, and kind of with my testimony I gave this morning, this kind of goes hand in hand. So, I felt like it was meant for me to sing this song today. I haven't sang it in a while, so hopefully I remember it. There's a window into heaven I can close my eyes Where there are no earthly struggles yeah. right. In the soul there is set free Where the deaf and dumb are shouting Cause the blind can finally see And those crippled legs are dancing Out of
from Winnemette straight and as you cross over US 31 on just a short ways past that on the right hand side is the church okay it's off the road at least yeah it's, yeah i think you have to turn off of the road and go into the the driveway okay. all right i want to share a couple of things with you this morning before we get into god's word uh, how many of you have met uh, Matt Oheim or his wife? They are pastors of uh, Davis Wesleyan out there by the river. Uh, about a year ago, the Lord gave him a vision and a mission uh, to start the process of a homeless shelter in this county. And... Uh, it has, it's, it's on its way, it's coming to fruition. Um, they have received the funds, they have secured a building. And uh, he has presented this, uh, this vision, this idea that the Lord gave him to the Pastoral Alliance. And our goal is that it would not just be uh, his church involved, but we would all in some way, shape, or form be involved. And it's gonna be here in town. And the idea is not so much a transient homeless shelter. Uh, what the Lord told him was for when people, uh, you know, maybe there's an abusive situation and people have to get out of a house. Uh, maybe there's a house fire. Now, most people have some family to go to in those kind of situations, but not everybody. And uh, to be honest, for the last 10, 15 years, I've been hearing everybody a lot of people, I should say, uh, talk about the fact that we need one here. Mm -hmm. And so it has come to the point and the place of time that a week from tomorrow at the community center, August 17th, I believe 7 p.m., that 
the commissioners and whoever's involved in that is going to be there. And uh, his, uh, Pastor Matt Oheim, and, and he has a board that is overseeing this project, they're going to go there and they're going to present, um, you know, what they want to do and, and how they're going to do it. And he's asking for those that are a proponent of this to show up and show their support. And so um, I'm asking my congregation uh, to uh, pray about this, and I will be there to show my support. And uh, many of us have talked about this before. And so it is, it is happening. It's going to take place as far as we know. And uh, I do believe that the Lord's in it. But I also know that uh, the enemy is ever-present during good works. And so uh, I'm asking that if you, if you can, to be there August 17th at the community center. I believe it's 7 p.m. I will confirm that. I will send out a text message to everybody. Um, and so I just wanted to share that with you this morning because I know some of us, like I said, we've talked about this for a long time. And so that is happening. And uh, uh, by all means, uh, go to Rochester Friday, but uh, I'm planning on having a back 40 fire here Friday if the weather permits. So either way, you can go to either one and you're going to be blessed. So uh, if the weather permits, we're going to have a fire on back Friday night. We haven't had one at, at all this summer other than the youth challenge we had one. And so... Um, just wanted to let you know that that's going to happen. Now, if it's raining or, or whatever, obviously we're not going to do that. Sure. But um, just wanted to share that with you. And, uh, you know, uh, pray for our, our children's workers. You know, Holly and Jackson are celebrating their one-year anniversary. And they're, I believe, Tennessee, I think, is where they're at. And uh, we want them to come back and enjoy their time together and safe uh, traveling mercies. And, uh, have, and also, you've seen we've been doing some work here. It's a little slow going, but uh, we're, we're not behind schedule in any way, shape, or form. The things that we want to do aren't really massive projects. It's just rearranging rooms and, and, and things of that nature. And I thank God for those volunteers that have come in and, and have helped with that because us doing the work in-house actually saves us quite a bit of money. Oh, yeah. And... Um, and so I'm just thankful for that. So be praying about uh, uh, what we're doing here. And I do believe that Lori has a ladies' ministry meeting after service today. Okay? I know I th she's over there now, as far as I know, and uh, preparing for that. And so, ladies, if you can stay and be a part of that, um, that would be appreciated. I know she appreciates all the input and all the help that she gets. So those are just some of the things, some of the, as a, uh, Bob Hasselbring, who was, uh, he used to be the pastor of the Highland Church, he would always say, we got to take care of house cleaning. And that was it. That was the messages, the things. That were... And so, uh, or as he would also say, I'm just shooting the, the shot across the bow, you know. So anyhow, I just wanted to share that stuff with you before we get into God's Word. And uh, today, and I'm not going to wear that other mic. I think I'll just try to stay right here. But we're going to go to the, the book of uh, Habakkuk, a minor prophet. And we're going to look at the question, why? A lot of us have that question, don't we, with everything. Why is this happening to me? Why did this happen? Uh, why is this going here? Why did you do that? Why did I do that? And so... Uh, I think as we look at our world and the things that are going on, uh, we've been asking lately why. You know, we think about stuff like COVID-19 and, uh, you know, human trafficking, the corruption in government, you know, uh, foreign and domestic terrorism and things of that nature. So we've been asking why. But how many of us have been asking God why? What about our, our illnesses, our sicknesses? We ask God. You know, we ask God, you know, I want to give you a little bit of real life, okay? I have a question for you parents. Has your child at some time in his or her life gone through a why stage? Why? We're going to grandma's house. Why? Finish your dinner. Why? 
Mom has to go to work. Why? Be home at 10 p.m. Why? Dad's tired. Why? Mommy needs a nap. Why? And as little children, they're very inquisitive. They want to know. You know, and actually, it, it can be irritating, but the fact of the matter is, is that young children, I believe they comprehend more than what we give them credit for, but at the same time, just as our Heavenly Father knows the big plan, and we want to know why, as parents, we know the big plan for the family, and, and the children want to know why. And if they can't put it together, they're going to ask. Now, I want to tell you, I grew up in an era where my mom and dad said, because I said so. Now, I agree with that, but it doesn't answer the question. The mind still wonders. And so one of the hardest questions to ever answer is the why. You know, a person can tell you their story or what they're going through or, or a decision that they've made, and at the end of explaining his or her life away, you can still have the question, but why? Okay? When a child is faced with an ob obstacle, like I said, that they can't quite understand or comprehend, then the, the, the error is going to fill with this why. And guess what? We're no different with our Heavenly Father. I want to tell you something. And I've heard people say, well, I know I'm not supposed to question God. Now, let's break that down. Because I believe you have the right as a child, and He's your Heavenly Father, that you can ask why. What you don't question is His will. What you don't question is His omnipotence. You don't question who He is. But if there's something going on in my life, you better believe I'm going to ask the Lord why. Why is this happening? Now, this brings me to a point. When most of us ask the question why, it's because we want comfort from the situation, not necessarily we want the true answer. Because a lot of time, the true answer, we're not going to like. Anybody willing to give an amen to that? Amen. <laughs> We're not going to like the true answer. What we want is comfort, and so we ask why. And actually, what we're asking is, like the song, how long? Well, why are you asking how long? Because you don't want to be in that uncomfortable situation. You want comfort. And sometimes the answer does give you comfort. But also, sometimes the answer is no. Or it's not for you to know. Okay? Okay. And so we have questions for God, and the hardest questions to find are the ones when we try to figure out why a loving God allows so many tragedies to take place. You know, uh, you know I know that Anna's family, is, they've had a struggle with that little baby being gone. But you know, historically, in biblical history, we're in good company. We are in good company. I think about Hebrews, the faith chapter, right? And i got a couple of verses I'm going to read, but for those of you that have read Hebrews 11, the writer tells us about Abraham, tells us about Joseph. Think about these people and what they went through. Talks about Jacob and talks about Moses and all the things that they took place. And I want to read verse 13 of Hebrews 11 to you. It says, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them. Embraced them, even though they did not receive them, they embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Abraham, Joseph, Jacob, Moses, they believed in the promise of God, but they never received it. They never saw it. And yet, that was their faith. You understand what the definition of faith is, right? Yes. I told you guys a couple weeks ago, you came in and sat in these pews, you didn't have faith they'd hold you. You had experience that they held you before. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then if we go in Hebrews 11, down to verses 32 through 39, listen to this. And it's amazing because I can just, a lot of people think Paul wrote this letter. And it sounds like Paul. But listen to the very beginning of verse 32. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jebath 
Also David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms. They worked righteousness. They obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were tempted, they were slain, slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. You know, Christians, we're a little soft today. We haven't received the promise yet, but we believe in it, amen? Yeah. We believe that Jesus is going to return, that the rapture is going to take place, that we're going to go to glory. We believe it. So what are we looking for when we ask why? Why do innocent people get beat up in the streets? Why, Lord? Why did I lose my job? Why, Lord? And mo most of us are wanting comfort more than the true answer. I want to tell you something. None of us really, really like funerals. But we're going to be amazed when we get to glory and we see how many people were saved through a testimony that was given during a funeral service yeah. where the very Holy Spirit of God was present at a funeral. I want to tell you about Habakkuk before we get in. I want to give you a little context. He was a prophet during, uh, actually during the same time that Jeremiah was a prophet. And uh, he lived in Judah. And it was thought to be towards the end of Josiah's reign into Jehoiakim's reign. And uh, just like Jeremiah, he would see his prophecy fulfilled. And it was the Babylonian invasion of about 597 B.C. Now here's an interesting note about this book. There's only two books of the prophets where they were not addressed to Israel. Habakkuk's is one of those. It's three chapters long, and it is a conversation between the prophet and God himself. It's a dialogue between the two. And so, uh, you know, chapters one and two, the prophet has, I'm saying the prophet because I don't know how many times in a row I can say his name. I was stumbling. The prophet has a wide debate over God's ways of judging his people. Because see, what happened is Judah had forsaken the Lord. And so he brought the Babylonians as judgment. Today, we have a hard time understanding that. We read it in the Old Testament, and we're like, oh, okay, we understand that. But what about when judgment comes to a nation? And I'm not just necessarily saying the U.S., but any nation. You know, God is still judging people today. And he's, you know, judgment starts at the house of the Lord. And I don't know why we forget that, but it does. And then chapter 3 is a confession of faith by the prophet. See, the prophet, like many of us, actually questioned God about what's happening to his people, what's happening in the circumstances, right? What's happening in the home. How many parents have knelt and wept at their bed praying for their lost children? Why, Lord? See, he wanted to know why things were going on the way they were. And we're going to look at this. And actually, I can't give you a set of verses because it's three chapters, and we're going to look at all three of them. And we're going to see what takes place. And so uh, Habakkuk's question starts in the very first chapter. We're going to look at verses 1 through 4. And then we're also going to look at uh, verses 12 through into chapter 2, verse 1. And it's, why does God allow bad things to happen? So as we look at the very first chapter, let's look at those first uh, four 
First four verses. The burden, notice he uses the word burden. The burden which the prophet Habakkuk saw. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry, and you will not hear? Even cry out to you, violence, and you will not save. Why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? For plundering and violence are before me. There is strife and contention arises, has the victory. But we get frustrated. And we see what's happening. And we say, why? I want you to understand what was happening. These first four verses wasn't about the invasion. Hadn't happened yet. Okay? What happened was Judah had forgotten God. And so there was plundering. You know what that, if you look that up, you know what they were talking about? There was no respect for another person's property. People were breaking into homes in Judah. They were taking and stealing. And when, when you read that verse and it says, there is strife and contention. People argued the fact that they could do it because they had the strong, strong arm to do it. And that's why he says in verse 4, therefore the law is powerless because the judges in Judah were corrupt. They were corrupt. And justice never goes forth, he says in verse 4. And the wicked surround the righteous. Hello. Uh -oh. We could say that today. And judgment was, the proceedings of judgment were perverse. That's what we see. See, the prophet wanted us to know, just, just as we do, he wanted to know, what was God doing? What was happening? Well, let's look at verse 2, or verse 12, through... Uh, 2-1. Here's the prophet's second question. Are you not from everlasting, O Lord my God, my Holy One? We shall not die. O Lord, you have appointed them for judgment. O Rock, you have uh, marked them for correction. You are of purer eyes than to behold evil and cannot look on the wickedness. Why? Here it is. The question, why? Why do you look on those who deal treacherously. What he's saying is, is God is watching the evil that's going on, and in the prophet's mind, he's doing nothing about it. Why do you look on those who deal treacherously and hold your tongue when the wicked devour a person more righteous than he? Why do you make men like fish of the sea, like creeping things that have no ruler over them? They take up all of them with a hook. They catch them in their net and gather them in their dragnet. Therefore, re they rejoice and are glad. Therefore, they sacrifice to their net. Talking about idols. And burn incense to their dragnet. Because by them, their share is sumptuous. And their food plentiful. Shall they therefore empty their net and continue to slay nations without pity? And then verse 1 of chapter 2. I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he, capital H, what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Isn't that funny? The prophet has a question and he knows he's going to get corrected by God. I think, he had, I think the prophet had a little more insight than we do today. How many of you know when you go to ask God a question that He might correct you? For sure. But here's another thing. I think this starts, this whole idea of, of why to God, I think it starts, it became, it, be, you know, it became to be from the original sin of Adam and Eve. Right? Mm -hmm. Who said you were naked? Well, immediately Adam blames the wife. And then what does the wife do? She blames the serpent. Serpent wasn't told not to eat of that fruit. Adam and Eve were told not to eat of that fruit. But there are biblical whys. You know, we read the scriptures and God declares that his ways are not our ways. And his thoughts are not our thoughts. But when we can't understand what's going on, does that really give us comfort? Because I want to tell you something. We're amazed when God moves in a positive way, we'll quote that verse. Well, God, God's ways are not our ways. 
A fire swept across the town and not a Bible was burned. Not a church door was scorched. Well, God's ways are not our ways, and he protects us. Yes, he does. There's also a lot of churches that burn from a fire. And so we have a lot of biblical why. See, we're in good company. I'm going to share some of these just real quickly with you. I wrote them down here. These were actual verses. If you want to, I'll, I'll try to go through them a little slow if you want to write them down. But here's the thing. Rebecca in Genesis 25-22 if all is well, why am I like this? So she went and inquired of the Lord. Genesis 25, 22. What about the Israelites in Numbers 11, 20? Why did we ever come up out of Egypt? Whiners. Whiners. Judges 6, 13, Gideon. Why then has all this happened to us? These are parts of verses. <coughs> They lifted up their voices and wept bitterly and said, O oh Lord, God of Israel, why has this come to pass in Israel? Judges 6.13. Israelites following the destruction of the tribe of Benjamin. Nehemiah 13.11. Why is the house of God forsaken? That was Nehemiah's question. Job 7.20. We all know Job. Job says he has the question why. Why have you set me as your target? What about Psalms 10.1? Why do you stand afar off, O Lord? Why do you hide in times of trouble? See, we're in good company. And finally, Jesus himself, Matthew 27.46. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I want to tell you something. I was thinking about when Dave was talking about the people that would come by and they would listen to the singing, but when the preaching started, they'd take off. Do you know the same thing happened to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ after the feeding of the 5,000? Right. When they were there for the food. Yeah. When he started preaching, you know it gets to the point, and I love Peter's answer, he gets to the point, are you guys going to leave me too? And Peter says, where would we go, Lord? People don't like to hear truth. We like to hear truth if it's good, if it's positive. But see, we also ask that in times of trouble. And we never really find the comfort, or that's what we seek is the comfort, and we walk away discouraged. Mm -hmm. See, we need to look at what God has to say to the prophet. See, he said why in chapter 1, and he said why all the way into chapter 2, right? And so why, why, why? Here's the truth of the matter. We need to turn to the who in the situation, and that is our Lord and Savior. We need the, the, the one that calls and says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. In the Old Testament, God said, I am who I am. That's who we have to go to. So we're going to go back to chapter 1, and we're going to look at the Lord's reply <clears throat> to the prophet's question. So in verse 5, how many of you ever read this book? This is... God speaking, his reply to the prophet's whiny little why. Look among the nations and watch. Be utterly astounded, for I will work a work in your days which you would not believe, though it were told you. I want to tell you people, we're looking at the world and we can't understand why this evilness of things like pedophilia and stuff, why it's not being addressed, right? Why, what is going on? And I take courage and heart in God's word. Because the Babylonians eventually came in and overtook. And they took the captives. And the prophet couldn't comprehend the evil that in Judah forsaking God. And then God using the Babylonians for the judgment. You know, it'd be like us saying, if God decided to judge this nation and allowed China to come in and overrun us. The truth is, a majority of people would say, well, God has forsaken us. And yet, I read here in that verse 5, and God is telling the prophet, be utterly astounded. Be amazed at the work I'm going to do. Even if you were told it, what if God told us, I'm going to allow the United States to be just utterly destroyed, but I'm going to bring a holy, righteous nation out of it. 
truth is we're selfish. We'd say, oh, I don't want to go through that. I don't want to see this nation destroyed. I don't want to see God judge us. But we should actually be looking at the one who can and who can't. Look among the nations and watch. Be utterly astounded. I want to tell you something. As he told uh, the prophet, the things he does and why he allows things to happen is not for us necessarily to know. Because we wouldn't believe him in the first place. That's what he says in verse 5. If I told you what I was doing, even if you were told, you wouldn't understand it. You know why? Because we're not God. We're his children. Dads, how many times you saw your child go into danger, gave him a little swat, smack on the hand, no, don't touch that, don't grab that, don't do that. Why? Because if you would let them do what they were going to do, they were going to be worse off than you reprimanding them. That's why parents do what they do. It's just that teenagers have a hard time understanding that. Because, you know, once you hit 16, you know everything. So that's how it works. Well, let's, well I'm going to go ahead and keep reading there because we're going to get down to verse 13. For indeed, I am raising up the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, a bitter and hasty nation which marches through the breadth of the earth to possess dwelling places that are not theirs. This is God speaking about what's going to happen and what is happening. Their judgment and their dignity proceed from themselves. Their horses also are swifter than leopards. You know, I looked up this, leopards. A leopard can jump 15 to 18 feet in one shot. A full-grown leopard. Now see, I believe maybe they didn't know back then how far a leopard could jump. But for this very moment in day, when I was sitting in my office, in my den, doing a study for this sermon, I thought, I'm going to look up and see how, far, how quick a leopard is. What they can do. What their agility. So I don't think that when the prophet, when God spoke these words to the prophet, he knew exactly how far a leopard could jump. Right? All right. And more fierce than evening wolves. I want you to listen to God's words. You know why he said evening wolves? Because wolves will, will uh, fast all day long. And when they come out at night to hunt, what are they? They're hungry. And their hunger makes them more ferocious because it's game on. Right? Their chargers charge ahead. Their cavalry comes from afar. They fly as an eagle that hastens to eat. You ever seen a, a red-tailed hawk or an eagle or a, an osprey hit on the side of the highway? You ever seen that? Every once in a while you'll see one. It's very rare, but you see them. You know what happens? It's because they see that little field mouse across the median, and they get tunnel vision. And they're not paying attention to that Mac or that Peterbilt that's coming down the highway. And they just target, right? That is the intent of God's word there. They're, they, the Babylonians are so focused on what they want to do that they fly like the eagle, full of strength in their wings. This is God speaking about this judgment coming to Judah. They all come for violence. Their faces are set like the east wind. They gather captives like sand. They gather... Put your hand and scoop up out at the beach. That's what God is saying, that the Babylonians scoop up captives like sand. They scoff at kings, and princes are scorned by them. They deride every stronghold, for they heap up earthen mounds and seize it. You know what they're talking about? Strongholds usually have walls. And the Babylonians were known, just as the Romans used to do this, just like if you know the story of Masada, when they held out Masada, they took earth and dug it, and they would take days and they would build an earth ramp so they could get over the wall. This is how focused and this is how strong the Babylonians were. For they heap up earthen mounds and seize it. Then his mind changes and he transgresses. He commits offense, ascribing this power to his God with a little g written in the scripture. His God. Okay. Verse 13. We've read this, but we're going to read it again. 
You are of purer eyes than to behold evil and cannot look on wickedness. See, this is the struggle that the prophet had. How can the only one and true God, righteous, full of holiness, look at what's going on in on the world? See, we live in this world, right? Yes. We're affected by policies, by intrusions, by things like evil things, terrorism, things of that nature. And we start to lose sight of who God is. See, the prophet was asking, why, Lord, why, Lord, why, Lord? We ask, why, Lord, why, Lord? And actually, what we should be doing is looking at who he is. Nothing knocks God off his throne. Never has and never will. See, God has determined that some things need to take place to better his people. I want to tell you something. I think there's a lot of hysteria and hype with the whole COVID thing. I, don't get me wrong. I believe there is a virus. But here's the thing. I saw people meeting outside the church walls that never met before. I saw people checking on their neighbors and making phone calls to other congregation members and saying, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Are you okay? And you know why? We got away from that. That's the early church. The early church met in houses and they would break bread together. And we got away from that. And I'm not picking on anybody here, but I can't tell you how many Sundays when we say amen and the doors are open, no conversation. Have those conversations. If you got to get to supper, you get to supper, but make those conversations. Call someone. We're a body of believers. We're a family. We should stay in contact with one another. See, God's people live by his promises and not by explanations. In chapter 2, that's what we read. I, I want you to hear this. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on the tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak, and it will not lie. Never known God to lie in my life. Though it tarries, this is what the Lord says to Habakkuk. Though it tarries, what's that mean? If it takes a while, if it takes some time. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry forever. Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Here comes the woe to the wicked. Indeed, because he transgresses by wine, he is a proud man, and he does not stay at home, because he enlarges his desire as hell. And he is like death, and cannot be satisfied. He gathers to himself all nations, and heads up for himself all peoples. Will not all these take up a proverb against him, and a taunting riddle against him, and say, Woe to him who increases what is not his! How long? And to him who loads himself with many pledges, will not your creditors rise up suddenly? Will they not awaken who oppresses you? And you will be, become their booty because you have plundered many nations, all the remnant of the people. This is the judgment to, ba to Babylon. This is what he's telling the prophet. I'm using Babylon to judge Judah, but their day's coming. God is saying, I know that they are an evil nation. I know that they are an evil, evil people. And what we see today is evil. Though that A godless society, a godless group of leaders, um, put any name you want in there. God knows. He knows. They, the Babylonians were huge into idolatry, having their images. Listen to this. We're moving down to verse 18 of chapter 2. What prophet is the image that its maker should carve it? The molden image, a teacher of lies, that the maker of its mold should trust in it to make mute idols? Woe to him who says to wood, Awake, to the silent stone, Arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is overlaid with gold and silver, yet in there is no breath at all. 
There's nothing living in an idol. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Keep silent before him. So here's the thing. If we recognize God for who he is, and we understand that nothing throws him off his throne, and we understand that the plan's bigger than we can even comprehend, how many of us are willing to admit that? That God's plan is bigger than we can comprehend? Because it is. He gives us snippets here and there, and I think that helps to bolster our faith. But what he desires is for us to distrust him. That's all he wants. He wants us to trust him. So we get to chapter 3. This is the prophet's response. And I want to tell you something. It should be our response too. So we're going to start in the first verse. A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet, on sh 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 boy, <laughs> Shigionoth, meaning unknown. That's what the word means. It means unknown. O oh Lord, I have heard your speech and was afraid. See, he said, why, Lord, why, Lord? Then the Lord answered him. O oh Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. We say, why, Lord, does the evil come? Why aren't you striking it down? I want to tell you something. A lot of times in the household of faith, things aren't right. So before you be start asking wrath on other people, you better be asking for mercy. Because there's no delineation with the Lord. Sin is sin. A hardened heart is a hardened heart. God came from Taman, the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of His praise. His brightness was like the light. This is what we should be praying and seeing and speaking. He had rays flashing from His hand, and there His power was hidden. Before Him went pestilence, and fever followed at His feet. He stood and measured the earth. He looked and startled the nations. I love that phrase. You know what they're saying? You know what His prayer says? That almost like God's not looking at the earth, at the nations, and when he turns and looks, it spooks them all. Because that's how powerful God is. That's how holy and righteous he is. He looked and startled the nations, and the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills bowed down. His ways are everlasting. I saw the tents of Cushan. In affliction, the curtains of the land of Midian trembled. Those are the enemies of the, of the Israelites. O oh Lord, were you displeased with the rivers? Was your anger against the rivers? Was your wrath against the sea? That you rode on your horses, your chariots of salvation. Your uh, bow was made quite ready. Oaths were sworn over your arrows. You divided the earth with the rivers. The mountains saw you and trembled. The overflowing of the water passed by. The deep uttered its voice and lifted its hands on high. I want to tell you something. When we read, when Jesus comes into Jerusalem and they tell him to tell his people to shut up, Jesus says the very rocks would sing his praises. I believe that. We don't see it now. Maybe it's blind to us. We read it in songs all the time about the oceans continually when they lap on the shore. It's a praise to the Lord. I think there's something to that. Otherwise, why would the Word of God have it in there? There is some, Maybe we just hear it as an ocean wave slapping against the sand or some rocks. But I think that when we get to glory, we understand all things, we're going to be dumbfounded in the fact that we never recognized it. When the wind blows and the trees sway, that noise, oh, that's just the wind blowing through the trees. Not according to God's word. Not at all. The sun and the moon stood still in their habitation, and the light of your arrows, uh, light of your arrows, capital Y, they went at the shining of your glittering spear. You marched through the land in, land in indignation. You trampled the nations in anger. You went forth 
the salvation of your people, for salvation with your anointed. You struck the head from the house of the wicked by laying bare from foundation to neck. You thrust through with his own arrows, the head of his villages, they came out like a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicing was like feasting on the poor in secret. You walked through the sea with your horses through the, the heap of the great waters. And when I heard, my body trembled. My lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered my bones, and I trembled in myself that I... 17 through 19. It's a hymn of faith. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit beyond the vines. Though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food. Though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk on my high hills. Amen. All of that. How many of us are asking why? How many of you want the real answer? Amen. Or how many of us just want comfort? How many of us are looking at our world and saying, why, Lord? Why? Well, I think it's good that we look at the prophet Habakkuk today. Yeah. Because the answer is not, that's not the question. The question is who is God Almighty? It's who? Who is He? Well, you don't understand. This is going on over here. But who is He? Well, wait a minute. This happened to my family. But who is He? Who is He? Who is the one that put the, the sun and the moon and the stars in their place? And I know our human mind can say, oh, we rotate around the sun. Somebody put it there. It's in its place. All these galaxies, somebody put it there. There is a Big Bang Theory. God said it and bang, it happened. That's how it happened. I have a small phrase or poem, if you will, from Billy Graham's wife. She passed away, she went on the glory in 2007, I believe. It says, I lay my wives before your cross in worship kneeling, my mind too numb for thought, my heart beyond all feeling. In worshiping, realize that in knowing you, I don't need to know a why. Why, Lord? Sometimes I think he's like, Dads says, because I told you so. I think we need to hear that from our Heavenly Father. We need to be reminded. When we say that to our children, what is the intent? Because I'm your father. That's the only answer you need, right? Because I'm the dad. There's a little joke between my dad and I. We took Tyler on the river about seven, eight years ago, and we get to the launch, and we're launching the John boat. And my dad looks at me and goes, well, Rick, I want you to run the motor. I said, but why? Because I didn't want to run the motor. He goes, because I'm the dad. <laughs> my, at the time, my 58-year-old father told his 40-year-old son, because I'm the dad. Guess who ran the motor? You. <laughs> We need to receive that in, in like manner, really, from our Heavenly Father. Because He's the Dad. We have to trust in the Lord, regardless of circumstance. And look, I want to tell you guys, it's not easy. It's hardly ever easy. I mean, it's easy when you're on that mountaintop. But when you're down in the valley, it's not easy. But as I've told you before, a hundred times, we were never promised an easy day. But what we were promised is that our Heavenly Father loves us with an everlasting love. And I believe that we were sealed with the promise at the point of our confession, our redemption. We are children of the living God. Yes. Grafted in to that Jewish tree. That's what the Word tells us. We are grafted in. And therefore, He is the vine and we are the branches. Let's pray.
Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. And I am so thankful for that everlasting love that you give us. Even when, when we don't act like it, when we fit and fuss, Lord, the truth is, Lord, we're not worthy of such mercy and grace, but you love us anyhow. So, Lord, as we leave this place this morning, Lord, I want to lift up our prayer request this morning, Lord. And I think of uh, Bertha's cousin that was in the car accident. And so many broken bones, Lord. And Lord, I'm thankful that uh, she's coming through, Lord, but we are asking for healing for her. We're asking that that healing would be quick. And we just thank you, Lord, that the, the I believe a great-granddaughter wasn't even harmed in the wreck. And we're just thankful for that. So we ask that you would be with Linda and her family. Let that healing take place, Lord. Mm -hmm. And Lord, for this uh, singing, this coming together, this fellowship, this gathering, as John Wesley would call it, it's going to happen Friday, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you would just bless it above and beyond measure. Lord, let, the, let your words flow through the singers and the speakers. Holy Spirit, do a, a new and great work in that gathering. And Lord, we pray for our fire that's going to be on that same night. Lord, that it would be a time of fellowship, that it would be a time of grace and mercy. And Lord, I think about Lori's ladies meeting that's about to take place. Lord, I know they have food and stuff over there, so we ask that you bless that food and, and all those that were preparing it. Lord, we ask that as uh, the ladies come together and they're looking at ladies' ministry and, and the things that they want to do for you, for the kingdom, that Lord, Holy Spirit, that you would reign in that meeting and that you would open the eyes and the ears and let your will be seen in what's going to take place. And Lord, I thank you for every family represented here today. Lord, you know what this week coming up, when we're starting today, you know what's going to happen, Lord. And I pray that as your word declares that you go before us, that you're behind us, Lord. That you would take care of your children. And Lord, may we speak life to someone that we meet this week. May we always be ever present in the spirit of our Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for being here this morning. Good to, good to see everybody. Last, last week was a little light. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anna. Well, she was talking to me and she didn't tell me.